Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, I actually have a little mini makeup haul to share with you guys. There are three items in this haul and this haul still ended up costing me 400 Canadian dollars. <laughs> For three items, we do know that this is ultra luxury now. So this is super exciting to share with you guys. I did purchase these things from Holt Renfrew, which is a Canadian luxury retailer. So it is a little bit different than Sephora, which is my typical go-to. But if you guys wanna see these three ultra luxury items and my initial thoughts on them, then just keep watching. All right, guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I have three items today that when I look at the receipt, I have an online receipt here, the total paid is 399 Canadian dollars. So it was actually fairly expensive for these three items, but I was really happy to have purchased them. I'm gonna start with the first one because this is one that not only have so many of you guys recommended to me, but also some of my other YouTuber friends have also recommended this to me. And this is one that I had a hard time sourcing in Canada for quite a while. I was like, where can I find this product? It's not at Sephora. And since the borders are closed right now, I haven't been able to get American items sent to my kind of border parcel area. If you guys are unfamiliar with me and my channel, I live really close to the US border, so I'm able to get some US products pretty easily. I just ship them to a depot that is like right inside the US border. Of course, I still pay duties and taxes and things that I have to do, but it's nice to receive these items because sometimes they're not even available to Canadians. This was one I was worried about was only an American exclusive but I did find it at Holt Renfrew. This is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Foundation. Now this is a fairly new foundation. It's not super new now. It's been out for a little while, but this is the Shade and Illuminate Soft Radiance Foundation SPF 50. This is in the shade four, which is Fawn. Now I actually just shade matched myself the same exact shade as my other favorite Tom Ford foundation, which is this one, which is the Soleil Glow Foundation. This one I've had for a long time. The lights won't be able to pick it up, but it is approximately halfway through with regards to how much I've used. So it's definitely a nice glowy, medium coverage, lightweight foundation that I really love. I was hoping that my shade match would be identical in this new product, and it actually is, so that's awesome. As you can see, I'm applying it to my skin here, and it has a very similar consistency with the Soleil Glow Foundation in the lightweightness of it, the glow factor, the medium coverage factor. So I would say there's a lot of similarities between these two products, which is definitely nice for someone that already has a favorite in the Soleil Glow. You can kind of count on the fact that this new product is going to still hit a lot of the boxes for you. Of course, there's more SPF for protection in this one. This is a 50, the Soleil Glow is 30, but this is one that, okay, the packaging of this way more bougie like way more bougie than this Soleil Glow. Like the Soleil Glow is still super cute, super nice, but wow, is this one really beautiful. It comes with a pump and the packaging does remind me of the lipsticks. So if you have a Tom Ford lipstick, it has a very characteristic black lacquer packaging that's very weighty in the hand and it's just stunning. So this is what I kind of mean, you guys. We have one of the lipsticks in my left hand here, or your right, <laughs> and this is Stable Smoke, which is one of my favorite Tom Ford lipsticks. You can see here that it has the same kind of elements as this foundation does with the Tom Ford and gold at the top, cube-like packaging. So it's similar in the foundation form, which I really, really like. I like that he stayed consistent with that kind of stuff because to me, this is a huge branding, kind of like familiar thing Thing with Tom Ford, the heaviness, the black lacquer, the ultra luxury packaging. Really, really love that. This one does a great job of blending into the skin really well. And like I said, it's a medium coverage product. You can build it up in certain spots to a little bit more of a full. However, I do think you're going to have to layer it and layer it and layer it to get a true full coverage. I didn't use any glowy primer or anything today. And I do feel like the sheeniness, the glow of this foundation is definitely evident. You can 
kind of see it on my face too. Like my lights are really bouncing off of my skin today. And it's because of the fact that this does have a fairly heavy glowy component, which if you're looking for that, I think you will love it. So the fact that it's called shade and illuminate makes a lot of sense to me because it does have the illuminating factor for sure. I would definitely not pair this with like flawless filter or glossier future do for instance. Those are very glowy primers. And I think this will make you look like a disco ball if you put the two together. So if you do want to put a primer over this, maybe do more of like a blurring or a smoothing primer versus a glowy primer, because I think it would be a little bit too much with this one. So this one in Canadian dollars, I'm gonna share with you guys, it's crazy. This is the by far the most expensive product in the haul, 189 Canadian dollars. So it just goes to show, this is definitely a pricey one, but I do think this is one worth investing in if you like Tom Ford foundations, A, and B, if you like a glowy foundation where you don't need a primer, which is really nice, and the medium coverage is very nice too. The shade range, I find, is consistent between at least the Soleil Glow foundation if this is already a favorite for you. Next product that I purchased, you guys are gonna be surprised by. This is the surprise of the video. <laughs> so after I did my Gucci review, I was using that bronzer for quite some time. I ended up gifting it to a friend because I got to the point where shade number three, which is the shade that I did pick up, which is medium, that is one that I was like, you know what, I can pull it off, but I have to be so careful with putting it on my skin. The blendability of the Gucci bronzers as well, it's a little stiffer with blendability compared to, for instance, the new Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Bronzer, which is also a new bronzer this year. So the Gucci one does blend, but it's a little bit stiffer on the blend. So if you're getting a darker shade, you have to be extremely careful versus a lighter shade that you can build up. So I always had this in the back of my head, like as soon as this bronzer gets restocked, I want to try shade number one because it's the lightest shade and I thought that it might still actually be okay for me. The fact that it has a bit of a red undertone to it and the fact that it's cooler, I was like, maybe the light would be better. So I ended up going and getting the light shades. So this is Gucci Poudre de Beauté, I think, Poudre de Beauté. Eclat Soleil, wow, good French. And this is in the shade number one. So I'm gonna show you guys what number one looks like. And I'm gonna also insert pictures from medium number three. So you can actually see, this is what shade number one looks like. And as you can see, you would think that this is too light potentially. Maybe this is like not enough of a bronzer color to show up on the skin. Reality is because of the red undertone to it and the fact that it's a little cooler, I actually really prefer this one. This is the bronzer I am wearing today and I just feel like I have the flexibility to build it up to keep it more muted. I just feel like I'm a little bit more free with this one and for this price point you guys I think that's super important. So this price point is 81 Canadian dollars for a compact. You can get it at Holt Renfrew like I said. I believe Sephora has also restocked them now but this compact is beautiful. I did a whole review on this so the compact what I thought about fragrance level and things like that. But I did decide to change shades because I just felt like, you know what? I really, really need to be happy with this. And even though shade three works, it's just like, I felt really cautious and like almost to the point where I didn't even want to use it because I was worried I was going to screw it up. Compact of this bad boy though, stunning, you guys. As you can see, so beautiful. Love the turquoise blue top, the gold bottom. It reminds me of summer, reminds me of a pool. And I think that's exactly why they put this on a bronzer makeup product because it's just all linked to summer and hot weather and sitting by the pool and the whole thing. So I am so glad that I switched. I feel like I can build this up so that it actually shows up on my skin as a beautiful, subtle, like deepening of the skin, like a tan, so to speak. I don't have any regrets in actually getting the shade one instead, but like I said, three still works, but I wanted to have a bronzer shade that would make me a lot more comfortable when using it. And the medium went to one of my friends that's actually more of a tan skin tone. So she's loving it. And that's great. <laughs> Let's talk about the last product in this haul. This last product is 87 Canadian dollars. Good grief. So all of these products were at least 80 Canadian dollars, which is why I, you know, got the final of $400 basically with taxes. 
<laughs> but this is the lipstick that I am wearing today and it's one that was highly recommended from you guys. I talked a lot about my love slash frustration with the new Hermes satin lipsticks. I love them because it's Hermes. I love the brand to be honest. So I'm very biased with that. I just like have a lot of appreciation for the brand, the history behind the brand, things like that. And I love the richness of the colors, the pigmentation. I love the range, but I did find with the satin formula that it tends to move a little bit more than I would like on the lips. So I asked you guys a couple of times, like, should I buy the matte formula? Is it actually matte? Because I'm not the biggest matte fan and I didn't want it to be such an expensive matte lipstick that I never wear, but I really wanted to test it for you guys and kind of compare the two. So this is the Rouge Hermes matte lipstick. The shade I picked up is number 48 Rose Boys, Boise. <laughs> Oh gosh, what's with the French? I really should have learned French, honestly. Now this says it's a matte lipstick with a concentrate of color, hydration, intensity, and comfort. The box is made with untreated paper made from recycled fibers, which is awesome. Honestly, we love that. <laughs> when you open up the outer packaging, you see this gorgeous bright orange Hermes packaging also, which is what they're known for. If you get anything from the brand, it's the bright orange with like the deep brown frame and the deep brown font. Love, love this brand, very classy. The lipstick also sits in one of these kind of pouches. It is really interesting, lots of levels of packaging to it. And then the bullet itself is the exact same as the bullet in the satin line too. So here are the lipsticks side by side. I have one that's satin and one that's matte. From first impression and just from the outer packaging, you wouldn't be able to see which one is which. Until you turn it around, you do have on the bottom satin lipstick and matte lipstick, but when you roll them up, that's when you have the difference. So when you roll it up, matte lipsticks often have, what's that look? It's like, um, how do I say it? Almost looks like a mousse. If you look at mousse, that's like firm, firmly pressed mousse, sort of what it looks like on the external, but some matte lipsticks don't offer the smoothness of a satin, which is why I often gravitate towards a satin lipstick instead because I don't like the dryness. This one though is insane. I think it's a little bit smoother yet than the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution, which is also a matte that I do like because of the comfort level. The Pat McGrath Matte Trance is also, I would say very close, but this is still slightly smoother. So it's crazy how like I've been able to appreciate this one so fast because of the fact that it applies so smoothly. It has the characteristics of applying like a satin, but stays put like a matte. Like it's smooth, it sits well. I feel like I'll kind of give you guys an update in a future video about how it pairs with like really longevity because I've only had it now for like an hour or so. I'm really glad you guys told me to purchase because it's one that has that smooth application, the hydration piece that I find is often missing in some matte formulas that really turns me off. Both the matte and the satin lipsticks have the same kind of smell. They're more like floral sweet kind of thing. So unfortunately that is something to expect with this line but I'm really, really hopeful because this does seem like it might stay a little bit longer than the satin ones, which is going to be a game changer. <laughs> With all these products, of course, I kind of took a gamble anyways, because if you guys are unfamiliar, Holt Renfrew does not have the same return policy as Sephora. So really be careful with that. Just kind of letting you guys know as a fellow Canadian, if you buy a beauty product and you do not like it, you need to make sure it's not used, it's in the proper packaging, like it's more so stricter rules for makeup returns versus Sephora. So if you're buying something from Holt Renfrew, make sure, make sure that you really, really want it and that you really think you're gonna like it. What do you guys think of this beauty haul, this little mini beauty haul that still cost me hundreds of dollars? <laughs> Definitely luxury loving problems, isn't that right? <laughs> Until my next one, guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys. You and me, everything that we've been through has made us strong. You won't believe we've had our great, but so many things that light inside of us.